In talking about the atmospheric moisture regime, I want to focus on precipitation because precipitation is by far the most important component of the atmospheric regime. Precipitation, uh, in order to understand precipitation, we need to understand three primary considerations. The first is intensity of precipitation. How many inches of rainfall did we have per hour? Another way to think about that is how hard is it raining? It's raining cats and dogs, uh, raining very hard. That's the intensity of precipitation. The duration of precipitation is the length of a storm event in hours. For how long did it rain? Boy, it's just rained for the last three days. We've had a tremendously long rainstorm. And the, th the third factor is how frequently does that kind of a storm occur in historical records? What is the historical incidence of this hard of a rainfall for this long a period of time? So we can talk about the intensity of rainfall, how hard is it raining, for how long did it rain at that particular intensity, and how often does that particular kind of a rainstorm event occur historically? When we think about different kinds of storm events, we can, we can identify three that are of particular importance to regional landscape planning. The first is what we call the one and a quarter inch storm. This, this is the amount of rainfall that, this is the amount of precipitation that is delivered by a one and a quarter inch storm. Uh, it, it's the first one and a quarter inch of rainfall that occurs. Treating this, this amount of water is very important for water quality. The reason for that is that this is the first rainfall that hits the surface of the earth and any kind of contaminants that might have uh, precipitated out of the atmosphere are picked up by what we call this first flush of precipitation and can, can create significant water quality problems as this first flush of contaminants moves through the landscape. The second critical storm event is called the 10-year storm event. This is a storm event that has a frequency of occurrence in one year over 10, 10 year time frame. This is what we call the design optimum for hydrologic control. Engineers and, and landscape architects and, and others attempt to try to be able to manage the 10 year storm as a way of making sure they provide health, safety, and welfare for residents in the landscape. The, the, other, the third type of storm event is called the 100-year storm event. This is, this is the storm event that has a frequency of occurrence of one year in 100. This is uh, uh, managing the 100-year storm event is essentially managing for ultimate flood protection. These concepts of uh, frequency of occurrence can, can, can be confusing because we can say, well, what's the likelihood of a 100-year storm event occurring? Well, quite literally, it's one year out of 100. So if we have a 100-year storm event occurring yesterday, what's the likelihood that we'll have a 100-year storm event today? It's one in 100 because the frequency of occurrence is one in 100 people tend to think, well, we had a 100-year storm event yesterday, we won't have another one, we won't have another storm of that duration for at least 99 years. Not true. The 100-year storm event, the 10-year storm event, is uh, the probability of occurrence, which, which every year is it, it, exactly the same. Precipitation range within the state of Minnesota ranges from about 37 inches down in the southeast corner to about 20 inches in the northwestern corner. In general, there's a, te a, a, a tendency, a trend of rainfall increasing as we move from the northwestern corner to the southeastern corner. You can see these bands of color kind of w w working their way diagonally across the map of the state of Minnesota. So we have somewhat of a moisture regime range variability depending upon where we are on the landscape. And that profoundly affects the kind of vegetation that we're going to have in the landscape. 
the the very the, the more moist areas down in the uh, southeastern part of the state are, are are going to have more forest landscape and the 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 variation in precipitation that's needed to support forest vegetation occurs about uh, two-thirds of the way across the state from east to west. And so essentially this boundary between the tan color and the orange color that I'm tracing here is essentially the boundary between where we receive um, enough moisture so to support forest vegetation and the, the amount of moisture that will support only prairie or, or grassland landscapes. So historically, the Northwestern and western portions of the state, because of the amount of rainfall that they receive relative to the eastern parts of the state, were prairie grass. And as you moved further east, then you moved into more and more dense forest. As you picked up the amount of moisture regime that's necessary to support forest vegetation. We might think that we have considerable variability in precipitation between what we have in the northwestern corner, roughly 20 inches, down to the south southeastern corner, 37 inches. But when you think about the variability first across the entirety of the United States, which goes from about less than four inches of rainfall per year to more than 160 inches of rainfall per year, uh, the, the variability that we have in Minnesota is considerably less. When you, you look at the variability of Minnesota relative to the variability of Texas, in Texas we have a variability of, of eight inches in the western part of the state near El Paso to uh, uh, approximately 50 plus inches along the, the Gulf Coast. And as you move further east along the Gulf Coast, the amount of precipitation that you find increases significantly. This slide is titled, One State's Disaster is Another State's Everyday Occurrence. And the point that I'm trying to make is that we can talk about the 10-year storm event occurrence occurring in Minnesota, which in Minneapolis and St. Paul, which is what the red MSP stands for, the 10-year storm event, the storm that occurs once every 10 years or has a, a probability of occurring one year in 10, d delivers about 4.2 inches of rainfall over a 24-hour period of time. Uh, the 100-year storm event, the storm event that has a probability of occurring one year in 100 years, uh, for the Twin Cities, that, that storm event delivers somewhere around 5.9 inches of rainfall over a 24-hour 20, period. So we can talk about 4.2 inches of rainfall being quite a bit of rain in Minneapolis. It, it's, it, 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 it has a probability of occurrence of one year in 10 years. The 10-year storm event on the Gulf Coast, however, is nine inches or 10 inches of precipitation in a 24-hour period. So what, what we would consider to be well over the 100-year storm event in Minneapolis, the 100-year storm event, again, is 5.9 inches of rainfall over a 24-hour period, is something that occurs at least once every 10 years. The other thing about the, probabil the probability of occurrence, as I said, we can have a 10-year storm event today and have another 10-year storm event tomorrow. A, a few years ago in the Chippewa River Basin in western Minnesota, they actually had three 100-year storm events occurring within the same week. So the likelihood of a 100-year of a storm event occurring is once one in 100 on, on any given day. Frequently occurring precipitation uh, in the state of Minnesota, this, this is what we call the one-year storm event. This is a storm event that has a probability of occurring once every year. In the Twin Cities, the one-year st st storm event delivers somewhere around 2.4 inches of rainfall over a 24-hour period. We can see that uh, of the 
of the one year sort of precipitation that lands on, uh, on the surface, most of it occurs in fairly low intensity uh, and delivers a relatively small amount of rainfall. 75% of the total of storms delivers 50% of the total total rainfall. And, and so, so we can see that 75% delivers less than 0.6 inches in a 24-hour period, 50% deliver less than 0.3 inches in a 24-hour period. So in order to understand water quality, then we have to be able to deal with these small streams and the hydrologic events that occur in these small streams. We need to be able to handle what we call the first flush of small storms, which is most critical to managing water quality. So again, the notion is dealing dealing with the first flush of, uh, of precipitation, making sure that we treat that first one and a quarter inch of rainfall. Excessive precipitation often inundates floodplains adjacent to a drainage channel. And so we can talk about that land which will be inundated by runoff generated from a particular storm event having a defined frequency of occurrence in historical record. So we can talk about the 100-year storm event delivering a certain amount, certain amount of water, that water creating a floodplain that will be inundated once every 100 years. And so we can talk about the 100-year flood creating a 100-year floodplain. So the portion of, uh, of this land from th this point on the left to this point on the right is considered to be within the 100-year floodplain this is, this is the portion of the land surface that has a likelihood of being inundated one year in a hundred years. But again, it, might, it has that same probability on Tuesday as it has on Wednesday. And so we can have a 100-year storm event on Tuesday and a 100-year storm event on Wednesday. And so that 100-year floodplain can hang around for quite a, a period of time. Similarly, we can talk about the 25-year flood event, the 10-year flood event, the 5-year flood event, and the 1-year flood event. And we can talk about the floodplain, the land area that's going to be inundated by a flood having a particular probability of occurrence. One of the things that's happened in watersheds over time as they've become more developed is that these floodplains uh, have a tendency to, to become higher and higher in the landscape. What might have been a 100-year storm event, what might have been a 100-year floodplain in a pre-development landscape, what I'm drawing on, uh, on the slide at this point, <clears throat> over time as more and more of the watershed becomes hard surfaces, water flows off rather than infiltrating into the land surface and that 100 year floodplain will, will, will uh, uh, inundate a much larger land area. So with increased development, the extent of different year floodplains is going to increase. 